For many new players and even some veteran pilots, the starter ships are often dismissed as just throwaway stepping stones meant to get you just to your next upgrade. But by the end of this video, I guarantee you'll want to hold off on that new purchase at a new deal. Because, as you'll find, the starter is a lot more than it seems. Hey guys, I'm Morphologist, and in this new player guide, I'm going to teach you how to turn your glorified escape pod into a more than competent fighter. First, we'll go over a brief summary of your starter ships, both the Aurora MR and the Mustang, so you get a good understanding of what you've gotten yourself into. Then we'll go over briefly the basics of modules so that finally you can understand what to upgrade and how. So step out onto the flight deck with me, pilot, and don't forget your helmet. So if you've gotten yourself the Aurora, congratulations, you've gotten yourself the more versatile of the two starter packs. This ship boasts a number of really nice features. You get a missile rack that can fit two size one missiles, which let's be honest, don't do too much, but they're there. You get some VTOL fans for some nice vertical takeoff in atmospheric conditions. And when you're ready to upgrade, you get two extra size one hardpoints. Internal visibility though isn't ideal, but some don't mind the struts. I personally think it's kind of endearing. This though is made up for by an occupiable cabin where you can throw boxes for box missions and a bed where you can log off should you choose to in the verse. By contrast, the Mustang Alpha has no interior and no bed, so no logging off anywhere you'll like. And for now, there's nowhere to throw boxes for box missions. It also has no VTOL mode for atmosphere, nor does it have any slots for missiles. But this is balanced by the fact that the Mustang is much faster and more maneuverable in atmosphere and in space. It also has two size one extra slots for upgrading and comes stock with two size two M4A laser cannons mounted on a rotating gimbaled turret. Meaning that in terms of firepower, the Mustang has the Aurora beat. Oh, and it has a cool drop down cargo bay. The true highlight though is the visibility of the cockpit, which is much better than the Aurora and actually a lot better than a lot of other ships currently in Star Citizen. Your choice between the two will come down to your personal preference. If you prefer dogfighting and atmospheric flight advantage, then the Mustang Alpha is for you. But if you want the versatility of being able to do different things aside from combat, then the Aurora might be a better choice. Whichever of the two you've chosen though, they are both really solid ships and can both be made even better with the right upgrades. So let's get into components and how they work. And finally, what components you might want to look into for your own ship. So you've done your fair share of box missions and searched your fair share of wrecks to get a little bit of change here and there and you're ready to upgrade. But where do you go? Well, you can stop at a number of locations. Any of the major cities, rest and relax, truck stops, or even Port Alisar will have things like dumpers depots to sell certain components. But as soon as you step through the threshold, you'll realize that you're a little bit in over your head. What exactly do all of these components do? There are so many of them, and each location you visited has a different set, so what exactly should you be looking for in the first place? Well, don't worry, all this will be very clear to you soon as we quickly next go over what components are and what they do. Let's start with an overview for those of you who may not be as familiar with Star Citizen. So, ships in Star Citizen are a bit more complicated than they look. All the components that make up a ship affect its behavior, affect its performance, and those components can be overheated, overclocked, destroyed in combat. For example, I could be fighting somebody and they blow off one of my auxiliary thrusters, which reduces my ability to rotate in one direction or even to slow down, putting additional strain on the other thrusters, making them overheat more quickly, which has to be handled by the cooler. I could keep going, but you probably get the point. Now let's briefly go over each component and what they do. So you've got two basic types of weapons in Star Citizen. You've got ballistic and energy-based weapons. Now the ballistics have a variety of different subtypes as do the energy-based weapons, but the basic gist of it is is that the ballistics have an increasing chance as the shields go down to strike directly through at the hull and the components of a ship disabling things like thrusters and components. They do, however, have one pretty big downside and that's their ammunition is limited and so your ability to engage for long periods of time is very restricted. 
Energy weapons, of course, though, don't have this problem. They draw off your power plant and therefore are able to continually fire at the cost of generating more heat, as well as not having the ability to strike through shields. Thankfully, they have overall higher damage at the higher tiers to make up for this shortcoming, and some will find that being able to engage for longer and shift targets without having to disengage from combat is worth the expense of the time to kill being a little bit higher. Let's also not forget that ammunition costs money every time you restock your ship, and so this is also an additional benefit of energy weapons, you never really have to worry about paying for ammo. Next are missiles. Now, the Mustang, as I said, doesn't come with any missiles, but the Aurora does. Now, they're not very big and they're not very powerful, but they can soften a target just a bit to even the odds. As you go up in tiers to different ships, they'll make more of an impact. For now, just try to avoid getting hit by one in either ship. Next, let's move on to the internal components that really define the way your ship behaves and how long it will survive in a dogfight. Now, shields are, of course, one of the most important components of your defense, and they're going to be what mostly determines your HP pool, aside from your hull, which you really can't change. Going up and down the shield pool, you've got several different kinds. You've got industrials, which are pretty beefy, but they don't recharge quickly. You've got competitive ones, which are more weak, but have a lower power draw. Stealth, which have very low power draw, but recharge very quickly, but also have a very low HP pool, and then the military ones which are a good balance that have very high HP pools. Now in this case, they really are dependent on your preference, and we'll go more into that later. Next is the quantum drive, the item that's able to move our ship and us across a system in a matter of minutes as opposed to years. Now at first glance, they may seem pretty simple. The higher tier you go, the faster they are. However, the higher tier ones come with the unfortunate downside of less efficiency, and thus, even though you have the same amount of quantum fuel as the lower tier drives, they unfortunately will be depleted much more quickly with a faster drive, thus limiting your overall range. Really, these drives are situational. You might want to find a happy medium. The really fast ones are good for fast response in a given local system, like around, say, Crusader's Gas Giant, while the lower tier higher efficiency models would be great for frequent long distance travel. Next is one of the most important important components of your ship, and that's your power plant. It's what's going to give you the ability to get better components that draw more energy, but they do have their downsides. Having an oversized power plant can increase your signature and thus allow you to be locked from further away and better targeted by missiles. Not a good idea. Well, one that's too small will severely restrict your ship's mobility as your thrusters will draw off of that power plant and if there's not enough draw, well, then you're just going to go flying off into space or into a wall. Finally though, we arrive at one of the most important components of your ship and that's the cooler. The cooler basically manages all the heat of all your systems in your ship and shunts them out in the space. Having coolers insufficiently sized will mean that your modules are operating at lower efficiency, causing them to behave strangely or not to work at all. The way they work isn't exactly clear at first, but here I've created a video to more clearly demonstrate it. The ship on the left has lower grade endo coolers, while the one on the right has higher grade hydro cells. At first glance, it seems that there's no difference between the two because they both heat up at the exact same time, but this is the trick. That's not exactly how they work. See, they only really kick in when they start to heat up, and that's when you see the difference. The endos on the left are not able to keep my guns cool, and so I'm having to stop more often to allow them to go down to a more safe level whereas the hydro cells are enabling me to fire for much longer periods of time between cooldowns. This means more DPS is able to be output by the ship on the right versus the ship on the left, and this is the same for each and every component. For example, the thrusters will be able to be kept cool better by a higher end cooler, and thus I'll remain more maneuverable over a longer period of time in a dogfight than with a lower grade one. Likewise for my shields, they'll be able to continually recharge at their optimal rate while under fire. Better cooling also allows you to take better advantage of overclocking on your weapons to make your ship more effective. You can overclock your weapons by going to your 
energy menu in your MFD and just going down to your weapons and selecting overclock, but be careful, you can damage your weapon if you overheat them too much. You still awake there, pilot? Good. Because if you are, that means that you're now more aware of your own ship's abilities as well as what components do, so it's time to pick up a wrench and get to tuning. Now at this point you might be wondering why I didn't just cut to the chase and tell you what components to put into your ship. Well, here's the reality. Star Citizen changes every patch, components get reworked and rebalanced, and so what's good right now won't be good in the next patch. Teaching you what components are and what your ship does, I think will help you understand how to adapt to different changes to the environment. So then, how do we decide which components to use? Well, there is a great third-party website called the DPS Calculator at urkel.games here on the screen. This independently developed tool can allow you to test fit weapons to your ship as well as components to see what it does to your overall performance. Here it can be revealed what the default loadout of the Aurora MR starter pack is, and you'll find that the components are actually fairly high grade with the exception of the quantum drive being just ho-hum. And of course, you only have two weapons slotted into your ship as opposed to the total possible four. What this means is that you can essentially just go buy yourself some size 1 gimbals as well as additional Yellow Jacket GT210s like is what I got in the video and have some pretty good DPS in some combat missions. No matter what you choose though, make sure you're buying the right size module for whatever you're slotting it into. Small ships take size 1 unless it's got a bigger slot like the Mustang whose turret is a size 2. And wherever possible, always try to use gimbals, at least for the current meta. But remember, it's a balance of your EM signature, your power usage, your cooling, and everything you want to do with your ship, and so you should take some time to figure out what's best for you. Keeping your EM signature low means you're less likely to be locked or detected from far away, so if you want to be safer, maybe you want to keep that EM as low as possible. On examination of the Mustang's stock loadout though, you'll discover that its components are actually fairly low on the list. This is to balance the fact that it has a much higher ceiling when it comes to maneuverability and DPS than the RSI Aurora. Of course, like I said earlier, it doesn't have as much versatility though. If you're interested to know though, particularly what I use for this video, I use two GT215s for the size 2s, two GT210s for the size 1s on gimbals, I swapped out the shields for some all stops, I got a beacon in there for the quantum drive, found a Breton then for the power plant, which is way too much, I probably just needed a Regulus, and then I got some hydro cells for the coolers. Just to get an idea of how much better your upgraded starter ship will be then, you can take a look at some other stock loadouts from higher tier ships like the Arrow, and you'll see that the Arrow is actually surpassed by the upgraded Alpha. Likewise, the much bigger and heavier F7C, the dogfighter of the UEE, is also surpassed in its stock loadout by the upgraded Alpha, and matched by the Aurora. Now once you figure out what you want to load into your ship, you're going to want to then head on over to another third party website which can help you find where these items can be bought in game. That address will be found here on the screen. With these two tools in hand, you'll be ready to upgrade your ship and the last step is to actually slot them in. To do this, you need to make sure that the ship you're equipping items to has been stored, otherwise you will not be able to swap out any components. When you've done that, you can access your vehicle manager by hitting F1 in your mobile glass and going down to the little plane icon. Then, select the drop down menu and find your ship. I've got a few, so it takes me a second, but yours will be the first one. Once you have your ship selected, you'll be able to view its various components and swap them out for anything that's in your inventory. Once you're happy with your configuration, simply hit save changes and equip and the next time you pull your ship out, it will have those items equipped. Now after all is said and done, you don't have to worry about losing the components that you've bought. As of a recent patch, Star Citizen's insurance now covers anything you put in a ship that explodes, so if it does go away, don't worry, when it comes back through insurance claims, you will get what you put into it back. 
I really hope that this guide has helped you, and if it has, make sure you let me know down in the comment section below. If you have any other questions, make sure you also visit our community which will be in the description of the video. You can also visit me on Twitch where you can ask me questions live. I'll also be posting links to the tools that I featured in this video there as well. It is unfortunate that we don't have access to something like that in-game yet. It will come eventually, I'm sure, but until then we have to rely on these really fantastic community members who do this essentially for free, and so if you want to donate a little bit to them, make sure you do so. I've not been contacted by them and I'm not getting anything from it, I just think what they're doing is really neat and I want to give them a little bit of a shout out here as a show of my own appreciation. Anyway, thanks for watching, I've been Morphologist, I'll see you in the verse.